today's review of the most expensive power meter that has been put through the Llama lab test is going to be a little reversed. I'm going to start with a conclusion to rip the band-aid off of this one because it will hang over the head of this entire video right through to the end. But just one second. Okay, now we are good to go. Let's pretend for a moment an unnamed company was to release a power meter in early 2020, or let's just say any time in the last three years, with the following features. Ant Plus only, with no Bluetooth, no left-right power balance, no torque effectiveness, no pedal smoothness, no cycling dynamics. It would need a magnet installed on the frame somewhere for the unit to work. No user firmware upgrades would be available. There'd be no active temperature compensation. The power accuracy would be plus or minus 1.5%. And the price in Australian dollars would be over three and a half thousand dollars, or in US dollars, around 1,900 to 2,500 US dollars. How would that go? My conclusion on a product being released like that in early 2020, or in the last few years, would be that it wouldn't sell very well at all. It only has a subset of features people require these days, and at a price that is way, way beyond what people expect to pay. Yet here we are, the SRM Origin, without a killer feature that makes me want one. Okay, with the summary and conclusion out of the way, let's get onto the details about this, the most expensive power meter I've ever ridden in the Llama Lab. So the SRM Origin, it's a modular concept power meter. That's what they call it. It's a spider-based power meter, so it's not based on any crank arm measurements, it's on the spider. So you don't get those left-right asymmetry issues we see with Shimano cranks at this point in time. Ant plus only, 1.5% plus or minus power meter accuracy. Interchangeable spindles, you can go 24 mil or 30 mil. The origin can be adjusted from 170 through to 175 crank arm lengths with the look trilobe technology. We'll have a closer look at that later on. Flexible chainring combinations. There are two battery options for the SRM origin. You can go the internal non-rechargeable or the internal rechargeable option. The rechargeable option gives you around 100 hours ride time and you will be charged a premium for that about an extra $240 or $250 above the internal non-rechargeable battery here in Australia. The internal battery non-rechargeable, which has to be taken off and sent back to SRM for replacement, you'll get around 1,400 hours. So a bit of give or take there, but given every time you have to take the crank off, you'll be without a bike for a couple of days and without a few hundred dollars, I'd go the rechargeable option if you've got this kind of cash to splash on a power meter. One of the highlights is the three year worldwide warranty. So hands down the best warranty we see with the power meter and it is super light. Last week I was lucky enough to get my hands on this crank in particular to put up against the Asio Maggiore and the Tax Neo in the Llama Lab up against my power meter testing protocol. As always, here we are on my favorite website on the internet, the DC Rainmaker Analysis Tool, where we can compare multiple power meters as an overlay and see how they stack up. A few things of note before we get stuck into the data here is this wasn't my bike, it wasn't my chain, it wasn't my drivetrain. So I'm not quite sure the condition of it. It looked clean, it sounded clean, but that's a fact that I need to take into account. Also, secondly, the look trilobe plug. Hmm, we'll need a closer look at this one for me to explain what goes on here. Now let's just say if you were to screw a pedal into a crank only halfway, it's quite loose. It dangles it around until you really tighten it up and the interface is metal on metal, it locks in place and the pedal is rock solid into the crank. With the trilobe, there's a plug that goes on the outside of the crank into the crank arm and on this side is a plate that sits on here and they, depending on the orientation, you'll get your three different crank lengths. Between the plug, the crank and the plate is a very small air gap. Now what that means is that the interface isn't rock solid with the pedal in. No matter how hard you crank that down, there's always going to be about a millimetre of air gap between the pedal, the pedal plate, and the threads on the pedal. Whether this will factor into the power meter readings? Quite possibly. And we did see this happen with the Tax Neo Smart Bike. So given those two factors are at play, the drivetrain and chain not being mine and being untested for efficiencies, and that air gap in the pedal plug, these numbers could be plus or minus a little bit more than spec. All that aside, let's have a look at the numbers anyway. Okay, so standard Llama lab test, SRM Origin, Tax Neo Original, up against the Asioma Duos. All is looking pretty good overall. Diving into the start here, which is Titans Grove, lots of over and unders. We have 238, 232, 234, all within a few watts. No major problems there. Happy days, it's all good. Okay, short, harder effort for a minute or two here. And we can see the SRM reading a little higher than the other two. 399, 388, 390. 
Hmm, okay, that is what it is. Data is the data. So the SRM reading a little higher than the other two. Into the steady state, 200 watts ERG, into 250 watt ERG, and then into the sprints. So for the ERG, nice and smooth on the pedals, 20 minutes, and all is looking absolutely brilliant. No left right issues with this power meter because it is a spider, not a crank. Um, doesn't really get any closer than that. 227, 225 down the back at the Neo, 228 on the Asioma Duo. So within a watt there of the duos, all is looking pretty good. It's the harder efforts where things get a little different. And to the sprint, and we can see there the SRM jumps a little higher than the other two. That was a very, very short sprint. So more data required on this. Now this is just an inside test. I didn't get to ride outside again. I just had the bike for a few hours. So it was just a Llama Lab test. So SRM peaking a little higher, coming back into line about there, then dropping off. So yeah, again, not quite conclusive, a little higher. Into the overs and unders, 350, 450, 350, 450. We know the Neo can handle that. And all looks pretty good. If I was to nitpick this though, the SRM again is a little bit higher. And the numbers there tell us that. 237, 227, 232. Still within that small gap. But I'm wondering, is that drivetrain coming into play? Is that air gap with the pedals coming into play? Which could be introducing more flex in the pedals making the readings a little different, higher, lower. I'm not quite a power meter engineer to know exactly what would be happening there, but I don't like any air gaps. I just give me two interfaces together and away we go. Anyhow, there are the numbers there. Look, not too bad, not too bad. Into a short, hard effort, 600 watts for about 20 seconds or 30 seconds, and we do see the SRM again reading higher than the other two. So 208, 195, if I can actually just jam this in a little closer here. So 333, 312, 324. So pick your poison and the, um, the Asiomas are right in the middle there, but the SRM is consistently higher than the other two. And then just riding along, just riding along at the end of the ride here, sim mode, 138, 129, 132. Again, SRM consistently just a little bit higher than the other two power meters I was using to measure. Cadence is the only other thing the SRM Origin Power Meter does. So let's have a look at the cadence numbers and what we can see here through the main parts of the Llama Lab test, 91 RPM, 90 RPM, 91 RPM, done deal. Cadence is nailed as it should be because it has a magnet on the frame detecting that spin. So in summary here from the data, ah, just not quite there. If this was my unit, it would be going back to SRM Service Center just for a double check of that calibration slope or I might be even pulling out the weights myself just to double check if that is what it should be reading. Steady state was okay, but those higher areas, that gap was just a little bit too much. It was really nothing like the Quark D0 I put on the bike the other day and saw some really, really close numbers with. So I'll cut this some slack just a little, given I only did one test with this and it wasn't my unit. It's a work in progress though. But for $3,500 plus, I'd want that thing to be absolutely spot on. That thing needs to sing and dance and make me happy for that kind of cash. It didn't do that. Now onto my quick breakdown of the pros and cons of SRM, because it's not all bad news. I've got to turn the happy dial up at some point here. So I'll start off with the pros. Okay, the pros. It's SRM. They know what they're doing. They've been in the market for over 30 years. They've got the process of building a power meter down pat. They've got the right materials, the right glues. They've got the distribution centers all over the world. They know power meters. So they've got that behind them. The modular design of the SRM Origin is a plus for sure. Different spindle compatibility, different train rings, and different crank lengths can be used all with the one power meter. That's definitely a pro. Being a spider-based unit, there's no asymmetry issues, which I've discussed in depth with Shimano-based power meters. Even though this unit here is called the 9100 model, the only 9100-ness about this is the chain rings. This is a spider-based power meter, so no wonkiness of left-right. Actually, you don't even get left-right, but you know what I'm saying. The simplicity of the Origin power meter has to go in the pro column. It gives you power, cadence, done. That's its job, nothing more. No extra features like Bluetooth, no extra features like pedal smoother, cycling dynamics, anything else that may require a bug fix and firmware update in the future, you get power, cadence, amp plus, done. That has to be a pro. Obviously being SRM, accuracy and reliability, but that's also a given these days if the thing's calibrated correctly of all power meters. As with all SRM units, you can do static weight calibrations yourself. Now this is not a zero offset, this is a static weight calibration of the slope to make the thing more accurate. But for this kind of money, the thing should be accurate by itself. Uh, and the warranty, three years, brilliant. Hands down, one of the best warranties for power meters out there. Now onto the cons, or the fun stuff, or why SRM won't return my calls. Uh, price, 
it's in WTF territory. That is just completely crazy. No Bluetooth of this unit. It's 2020. Well, Stages had Bluetooth long, long ago. Seven or eight years ago, I think Stages had dual amp plus and Bluetooth in their power meters. Uh, why this is a problem? Indoor cycling. Apple TV, iOS, and future-proofing your device. Let's just say head units don't do amp plus anymore. Remember, Garmin own amp plus, and there are other head units out there. Maybe they'll drop amp plus in the future. Guess what? Yaris RM power meter is not going to work. Bluetooth needs to be there to future-proof the device. No left-right data, no cycling dynamics, no additional power metrics. If you don't use them, yeah, fair enough. But units one-eighth of the price come with those extra metrics. And it's only a matter of time before our software knows that we're standing up or sitting down based on our cycling dynamics data. That'd be pretty cool. Having to return the unit to base for a new battery, if you choose the internal non-rechargeable battery, well, you're going to be without a crank for a few days. That would make me cranky. Dad joke, I'm qualified. Uh, there's also an additional cost for that. And I think one battery recharge at the service center, plus a calibration, plus a firmware update, if they do that back at base, will cost you about the difference between a rechargeable version. So it doesn't make any sense to get the internal one. I don't know what they're thinking with that. No user firmware updates. Um, I think that's due to a lack of features in the unit anyway. There's nothing to fix because nothing can, really can go wrong. Uh, and a frame magnet is required. If you buy yourself a high-end Pinarello S-Works, giant T, I said high-end, uh, you're gonna have to glue a frame magnet on. Um, not ideal. Accelerometers are the way to go. Quark had that sorted years and years ago. Um, why they haven't got accelerometers, I don't know, but there we are. So look in summary there, look, the SRM origin speaks for itself. I've just given it a voice about what I've seen and the feature sets. Ah, uh, look, it's plain, it's simple, and it's crazy expensive. If you're buying an SRM origin and paying that sky high premium price for access to that three year warranty and the service center, here's my perspective in Australia on that. For the price tag of the unit here, I can buy three sets of ASIOM duos and one set of ASIOM UNOS. That's four power meters and still have $37 in my pocket left over. Warranty wise, that's a hard sell. So buying this based on warranty alone and paying that sky high price, that's a pretty hard sell given I can get four bikes equipped with power meters that are accurate and have four times the features. To address a question that comes up all the time when discussing SRM is, why do the pros use them then? Well, I'll have a guess at a few of the answers there. First of all, legacy. SRM has been around the Pro Peloton for years and years and years, and it just works. So of course, they're gonna to continue to use them. They're accurate, most of the time, reliable and simple. Mechanics like that, pro riders like that. You get power, you get cadence. What more do you need from a power meter? Except all those other metrics, but let's ignore those. They get what they need to get the job done. And it's likely the pros don't pay for them. So the biggest hurdle and the biggest barrier to entry for the end user for SRM, which is the actual price tag that is just phenomenally high, the pros don't have to worry about that. So free power meter, that just works. It's been reliable for years. That's why the pros use them. Oh, they probably won't use them if another company comes along and pays them more to use their other power meter. Hmm, I didn't think of that. Anyway, that covers why you'll see pros on SRM still. Okay, wrapping this one up for today. Look, it's very obvious with what we've seen today and what I've seen in the Llama Lab and doing some comparisons of features, SRM have to move with the times. They are many, many years behind everyone else for features and they're in the stratosphere for pricing. Sure, you can say that's offset by a three year warranty and access to a service center, but at what point do you buy four other power meters and throw two of them out, have twice as many power meters and $37 still in your pocket? Doesn't make financial sense at all. If you're banking on that extra warranty, sure. If you like the look of SRM, sure. I think what you're paying for though, is those three letters stamped on the side. Alrighty, thanks for watching this one. Remember to hit subscribe to be notified of new videos going up on this channel. It's much appreciated. We'll see you soon.